Hello, I'm Alex Brockmiller from Meditoyo America Corporation. I'm an application engineer. We're here today in the uh, headquarters in Aurora, Illinois. And what brings us today here today would be GearPack. So GearPack is a piece of software that allows us to generate inspection programs to evaluate and ins inspect gears. Uh, if you have any questions during this presentation, feel free to type it, your questions within the chat and we'll go ahead and answer those towards the end of the presentation in a Q&A session. Uh, so we'll be looking at the GearPack software on this Krista Apex V series CMM. Uh, we have different capabilities in terms of accuracies. This one would be the one that would be most uh, comparable and most uh, our commodity, commodity uh, CMM starts with an accuracy of 1.7 microns. What I like about this CMM is the fact that almost everything on here is made by Mitotoyo over in Japan. Uh, we have take great pride in our products. Uh, one exception would be the Renishaw probe head, uh, the world leaders in probe technology. We have a great relationship with them and our technology works great with, with ours. So on the table itself, we have a rotary table that we'll be using as well. So that will allow us to keep the probe relatively uh, stationary as the rotary table rotates the part. So uh, basically we're gonna go through the software uh, and go through the process of how you can create that program, run the actual program, take a look at the results, and then ag again at the end, we'll go through a Q&A session. So let's go ahead and take a look at the software. All right, so this is mCosmos, the software that runs our CMM. Uh, it is also within here that we have the gear pack module. So I do have one program ready to go. I'll explain how we were able to set that up. But uh, for example, if we were to start a brand new program, and wanted to inspect a gear, uh, we would fire up gear pack. So I'm just gonna double click right there. And then we have a few options in terms of the different gear types that we support. So cylindrical gear would cover both spur gears and helical gears. Uh, we also support worm, bevel, which uh, includes both straight and spiral bevel gears and high point gears. Uh, this particular gear that we have on the machine today is a spur gear, but uh, the process to generate a program for any of these gears is fairly similar. So from there, I'm gonna fire up this one that we've already set up. Basically, we have these four steps right here, nominal gear geometry, measurement conditions, tolerance, and output. And basically, you just follow those four steps, uh, set up how you want to measure your gear, what do you want to measure from it, and how do you want to get your report. Uh, and once you go through those steps, uh, then we would click on the Start Path Generation button, which would go ahead and generate the, the gear inspection macro. So I'm just going to briefly go the few, through the, these tabs here, and we'll take a look at what we have. So for nominal gear geometry, this is where you basically refer to your blueprint for your gear. Uh, put in all of your geometric uh, gear dimensions, so things like the number of teeth, what is your normal diametral pitch, if you're in inches or module, if you're in millimeters, uh, pressure angle, and so forth and so on. So here it's just a matter of plugging it in directly uh, from your, your blueprint. If you do have the need to modify your envelope profile or your lead profile uh, from the uh, nominal geometry, then you have the ability to do so as well. And from here, you would go ahead and apply or enter in those values. Something that I like about gear pack in general is that if you hover your mouse over most of these fields, you get an additional tip that helps you figure out uh, what kind of values you need to input. And uh, from there, it makes it that much easier for you to go ahead and start generating a gear inspection macro. So basically that's, that's it for there. You just type in again what's directly on your blueprint uh, in terms of the shape and size of your gear. Under measurement conditions, this is where we would go to define how are we gonna measure it? What are we gonna measure uh, within this tab here? 
So I'm going to be using the rotary table in this case and oh, using a single probe. Basically, I'm going to have the probe indexed to a specific orientation as the probe moves in and out of the gear, which again, we'll see during the present, uh, the program run. You do have the option to use, instead of the rotary table, a the probe head itself. So we have a PH10MQ uh, Renishaw probe head, which has the ability to rotate in seven and a half degree increments. And you have the ability, if you don't have a rotary table, to choose that instead. And basically you would have the, par the probe head rotate and work its way around the part without the part rotating, since you wouldn't have a probe head or a rotary table in that case. Uh, we also have the ability to use a star probe as well for those maybe that have a fixed probe head that does, doesn't have a ability to uh, rotate. But in this case, we'll be using a rotary table. We also will be using this scanning mode. So uh, this particular probe that we have on, on here, the SP25 uh, constant contact scanning probe has the ability to maintain contact with the part and scan the entire part without taking, uh, retracting from the part until it's done. You do have the option to, uh, if you don't have a scanning probe, to take touch points, individual touch points as well. Uh, but we'll see further on why uh, it would be much more efficient to use a scanning probe wherever possible. So from here we just have other parameters, how fast do we want to scan the envelope profile and the lead. Uh, what kind of safety distance you want to put in. So um, if you have a small part-to-part -part variation, then you can get by with a smaller safety distance. Or if you have a small gap between the teeth, then you may need a smaller dis safety distance as well. Or another word would be for it would be uh, searching distance. Here we would specify what exactly are we going to measure. So in this case, we want to measure both the envelope profile and the lead. So we have a graphic rep rep representation as to what that looks like. Uh, so we could just do the envelope profile or just the lead. But in this case, we want to go ahead and do both. Uh, and we want to evaluate not only the flank, but the pitch as well. So from tooth to tooth, what that error would be and the, uh, the profile as well. And we want to go ahead and measure both sides of the teeth. Other than that, there are some other more in-depth parameters that you can adjust here. How many teeth do you want to measure? Uh, and do you want to measure the tip and root diameter, that kind of thing? Um, this is also another extension of uh, measuring that tip and root diameter. Uh, you have the ability to simulate a rolling test. It's important to know that we actually don't have a master gear set up here, so this isn't a, considered a true rolling test, but uh, this will provide a simulation at least and provide some feedback. And you have the ability, if you know that your part is off a little bit in terms of maybe the root or tip diameter or the profile is off a little bit, then you have the ability to make some small adjustments here as well so that you reduce the potential uh, collision into the part if you know your part is off by, by a bit. So there's that. And then we'll go over to tolerance. So for tolerance, uh, we support a, a variety of different standards. In this case, I have set up an AGMA 7, a class 7 uh, standard here. If you have your own tolerances, you can input that on your own, and you'd be able to adjust uh, specifically what your tolerance is, for instance, the envelope profile. Uh, you do also have the ability to create ANSI or K charts as well if you want to adjust the shape of your uh, of your upper and lower tolerances for your profile. And on the next screen, for instance, this would be for the envelope profile, you'd be able to spe specify exactly how, what the shape of that tolerance band looks like here. Uh, this would be the screen for the lead profile. Same concept. And then pretty much all of your other remaining parameters for gears. Uh, can be found here. So things like your radial runout, your tooth thickness, uh, dimension over balls, pitch variation, so forth and so on. And uh, most of these numbers you find directly on your print as well. So if you had like a dimension over balls, you could click on this check mark, type in what your upper and lower tolerance is for dimension over balls. Of course, you need the ball diameter, but you would just input that right there. 
Uh, this would be the screen for the major and minor diameters. So you would just type in what your tolerance is for that. You also have the ability to evaluate radio runout and concentricity uh, based uh, going back to the axis of the gear. Last step before we actually generate a gear macro, inspection macro, what was the output tab. So from here, you can choose as much or as little information that you want to show in your report. So each of these check boxes, uh, you can have show within the report. If it's too much information, you can uncheck them. Uh, for instance, if I don't need to know what the helix angle is, especially for a spur, then I could have that turned off and other uh, adjustments that you can make in terms of what you want to show or not show. Uh, so this would be for the graphs. And we'll see towards the end of the, uh, end of the seminar, after we run the program, what a sample report looks like. Uh, some more customization possible in terms of how you want your graphs to show. And then once you set that up and gone through all four steps, you can hit Start Path Generation and then it will go ahead and generate that program for you. So what you end up with is the actual program. I'm gonna open up this program in editor mode. Uh, this will be familiar for those already familiar with them. Cosmos but may not have seen GearPack yet, but you end up with a, a program and all of those measurements and all the evaluation that takes place for the gear measurements is all handled within this one line of code right here. So uh, it's very user friendly in my opinion. You're not going out and trying to figure out how to measure it, how to do this evaluation. Uh, this gear pack software takes all care of all of that within this one line. So here we just have a, a few move commands. Now ahead of time, I did go ahead and create an alignment program. So it's important that the CMM or the coordinate measuring machine understands where exactly the part is within the work envelope and how it's oriented. Uh, so I went ahead and created an alignment and normally for outside of demonstration purposes, uh, we would typically have this automatic part alignment just right before the gear evaluation, but just wanted to go ahead and, and fire this program up. So, Without any further ado, we'll go ahead and run this program. So uh, we're going to switch over to the f feed of the uh, gear itself. Uh, we have a little uh, picture in picture in the lower corner showing what the software is doing. But I'm just going to go ahead and run this program. For those, again, familiar with them, Cosmos, this runs like any other program. So right now the rotary table is rotating to its origin position uh, before it actually uh, starts moving. So again, I just recall the saved coordinate system at this point. So the part or the software knows exactly where the part is and can get started. But uh, here we see the probe coming into contact with the part and it's maintaining contact as the rotary table rotates the part. So you can see that the, the ruby ball is going in and out of the, the teeth of the gears. And right now this is measuring uh, halfway down the face width and doing a radial or, or scan completely all the way around the part. So with this data here, we're able to collect things like the major, minor diameter, things like the pitch diameter, pitch, tooth-to-tooth uh, -tooth pitch error, the profile for the involute as well. So all that information is going to be collected from this one scan. After the scan is done, then we'll see the lead profile scans take place. Uh, but this one here is mainly just for the, like I mentioned before, the involute profile and all the other dimensions that you can collect from this scan. So it looks like so far we're about, we're almost halfway through the scan, completely going around. Uh, we've taken about 2,400 points. So you can imagine if we were to use a touch trigger probe only, as opposed to a scanning probe, uh, it would take a much longer time. Uh, for those not familiar with what a touch trigger probe does, basically it comes in con to contact with the part and then retracts immediately, and then you get one point. 
and then it'll go ahead and repeat for as many points as you need. It does so as a, at a rate roughly of one point a second. So if you're taking, this will turn out to be a little over 5,000 points. If you're taking 5,000 touch points, it's going to take considerably a much longer time. Uh, the other benefit that you see with this rotary table in action is the fact that the probe is, isn't moving that much with respect to the part. It's basically just moving in and out and in and out with this one probe orientation here. And that helps increase the re repeatability of, the, of your results. So you'll have good re repeatable results even if you didn't add a rotary table, but uh, the, you'll see even better performance with a rotary table. Uh, again, mentioned earlier, if you didn't have a rotary table, you can in inspect this gear, but it, basically what would happen is instead of the part rotating, the probe is going to rotate around the part. So with that, you have a lot of quite a few probe orientations. And from there, you'll go ahead and basically you'll have different probe data calibration data for each of the angle orientations and that could introduce some small errors. So now we're actually seeing the portion of the program where the envelope scan is done and now it is performing the lead scans. So it's basically starting at the bottom of the face width, working its way to the top. Uh, I specified this uh, program to do this at four teeth spread evenly throughout all the teeth and it is doing it, these scans on both sides of each teeth. So we have a total of eight scans that we will see. So it finished the first two, working on the first scan of the second tooth. And there it moves on to the second scan of the second tooth. So this rotary table is uh, our product as well, uh, known as the MRT320. So the 320 stands for how many, how large that rotary or rotary portion is, the, the outer diameter in millimeters, so that's 320 millimeters. Has a uh, maximum load capacity of 220 pounds, uh, max revolution speed of six revolutions per minute. Uh, but definitely can be used not only for gears, but for uh, non-gear parts or non-gear uh, geometry features as well. So. Uh, it, this can definitely help improve throughput, especially for these kinds of cylindrical parts. Uh, CMMs in general, you can use obviously not just for gears, but for a wide variety of other parts as well, which makes it a very versatile uh, piece of equipment for all of your dimension needs. So there it's measuring the f first scan of the final tooth. Um, after this last scan happens, then the probe will move to a safe location and then it will go ahead and perform its evaluation. And that will be the end of the program. Again, if you have any questions at all, feel free to type them in the chat and we'll go ahead and address those at the end of the uh, presentation. And if you've enjoyed this video so far, uh, feel free to subscribe and like to our account. It definitely helps us out and you'll be gain that much easier access to all of our quality content. So that was the end of the program. I'm going to go ahead and open up the re report that was generated. Again, what you can see, uh, get out of this report or you can somewhat adjust what you want to see or not see, but I'll go ahead and do a quick overview of what we're looking at. So here we start off with the actual graphs of the envelope profiles at the top. So these are four, the four different teeth that we measured. So up at the top we have tooth number one, six, 11, and 16. And then we have on the right side of the teeth over here and the left side of the teeth over here. And then we have this nice uh, graphic over here kind of helping you understand that this towards the top is towards the tip of the tooth and down here is towards the root of the tooth. So that gives you an idea of if you have like a certain peak in your results, that'll help you figure out where exactly on the tooth you're, you're potentially at a spec. The green rectangle box represents your tolerance width based off of the, in this case, the AGMA 7 that we've inputted in the tolerance. 
and then these numbers actually represent how much deviation we have. We are in inches, and this would be in tenths, ten thousandths of an inch. So the eight represents the fact that we, the quality of this gear is good and is better than the seven. If this were at a spec, then we would see like a red dot pop up and in addition what the value is. So if we had something that was slightly out of spec, we may see a six instead, uh, lower than the seven that we had specified. We also have similar graphs available for the lead profile as well. So uh, you have the four teeth, left and right sides, uh, we have the top of the gear towards the top of the graph and the bottom of the gear towards the bottom of the graph. So this all looks pretty good. Further down in the report, we have run charts. So different run charts. So we have uh, cumulative single pitch errors. We have radio runouts. You have actual numerical uh, values in a chart over here as well. Again, if we had some bad results, then they would show up uh, red, with a red dot next to it. Uh, we have a couple of other parameters as well, tip radius and root radius down here. Below that, so you'll find within this report, I basically turned everything on. You have the option again to turn off what you don't need, but we have a glossary to help you figure out what all the icons and the symbols represent. Uh, so if I'm wondering what this F, capital FP is, then I can look this glossary up and say, okay, this is a total composite pitch error. Below that, we have basically what were the gear parameters entered in. Uh, this would be on that nominal gear geometry tab uh, that we entered in. This should represent exactly what's on the blueprints for the part. Uh, the evaluated parameters, measurement conditions, uh, this is also specified in, within the gear pack portion. How fast are we scanning? What is the scanning pitch? So in the case of the envelope profile, we had a scanning pitch of just a little under four thousandths of an inch. So it basically, as it travels every four thousandths of an inch, it took a measurement point. And then below that, we have a nice summary of the results in chart format. Uh, with the nominal value and tolerance if applicable and the actual value as well. So lots of different pieces of information. And below that we have a lot more detail for every single tooth. So we have flank geometry errors, the radii for the uh, tip diameter, pitch errors for each teeth on both left and right sides, and just quite a bit of information. I would say most customers don't need to go particularly in this in depth, uh, but for those that need it, it's here. And for those that don't need it, you can certainly turn them off as well if it gets in the way. Then we have another full glossary towards the end of the, the report here. All right, so that's what a typical report looks like. You can see that we went through the process fairly quickly in terms of generating a report. Uh, in terms of running the program and getting uh, actually reviewing the report. So I think at this time, we'll go ahead and open it up to question the Q&A session. Again, if you haven't already, feel free to type in your questions within the chat and we'll go ahead and address as many of those as possible. Okay, so the first question is, what is the smallest size module can we measure uh, on the CMM? So for those that aren't familiar with that term, module you can think of more or less as kind of the gap between uh, each teeth. So for a smaller, for a smaller uh, gear and for a gear with more teeth, you're typically going to have a smaller module. And what's important about that, and that's definitely a good question because if your probe is not small enough, the size of your ruby ball is not small enough to get in, to the, in between the teeth, then you're unable to collect the data needed. Uh, so with our CMMs, we can easily support uh, radii of stylus or diameters as small as 0.2 to 0.3 millimeters. And there is a guideline that GearPack suggests that uh, basically states that your module should be uh, or your diameter of your ruby should be at least 90% smaller than your module. So 
Um, if your module is, let's say, one millimeter, then you'll want to have a ruby ball that is 0.9 millimeters or smaller. So if we were to bring that over to the, on the smaller end, how small can we go? We're talking about in terms of metric, like a 0.35 millimeter, uh, 0.35 module is what we're looking at. So with that, you could put your 0.3 or 0.2 uh, ruby ball on there and still manage to get in there. Good question. Okay, so the question is talking about tolerances and if you have custom tolerances, how would, we, how would you be able to apply those? So I'm gonna go ahead and fire this back up. Um, so this would be the current tolerances that we currently support. You have your ability to input your own tolerance. Basically you would put in your own label here and then on your next screen, this is where you would type in all of your deviations um, as well as if you need to adjust what the shape of your tolerance bands looks like, uh, this is where you could adjust that. All right. Okay, and then we have a question. Maybe I missed it, but are you able to get a dism and dedism and pitch plane information? Right, so that's, those are good questions as well. So within the nominal gear geometry, we have over here an addendum modification uh, modification coefficient so you'd be able to apply that if you have that on your blueprint or if you want to evaluate it within your report uh, then it's also within here as well so maybe if I can find this it should be in the summary of results so right at the top here we have what that coefficient represents uh, so we input it we just left it at zero and this is the actual measured value Yeah, so certainly that's doable. So in the end, what you end up with after using GearPack is a program that you can run like any other MCosmos program. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this program back into editor. So basically, this is the program that we created for measuring the gear. Now, at any point before or after this, we can or even, yeah, before or after this, we can go ahead and include any other kind of measurements we want. So maybe for that hub at the bottom of the gear, we're interested in the diameter or its relationship to the gear, uh, we can go ahead and measure that again before or after the gear measurement and include that all within a single program. Okay, so the question was, uh, we have a customer interested in a CMM uh, purchasing one uh, for, for their needs and are wondering if maybe they're possibly, if they're not starting out with a gear uh, application, can that uh, portion of the software be added on later? Uh, the answer is yes. So if you purchase a machine, uh, we, of course, we would have the MCosmos software. Uh, if you aren't, don't have a specific need initially to measure gears with gear pack, then you don't have to pay for that option. Um, you can always add that on later on down the road uh, once you feel the need to do so. And that would uh, be the same situation for, for most customers, most current customers as well that have M Cosmos, maybe don't have gear pack right now, but are looking to have the capability to inspect gear pack, uh, they most likely can add that on as well. All right, so I think that's all the time we have for today. Uh, if you have any additional questions, feel free to get a hold of us on midatoyo.com or through your local office, uh, through your local support team. Uh, we want to appreciate, we greatly appreciate your time and attention to this presentation. Again, if you have any questions at all, feel free to contact us. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to uh, subscribe and like us and that would be great, grateful for on our end as well. So thank you for your time and have a great day.